I think the thing that comes to mind is that Jesus is in control. Proverbs 19, 21 from the message version says, we humans keep brainstorming options and plans, but God's purpose prevails. And let me tell you, that could not be truer than the season that um, myself and my family have been in. Specifically, 2022 was a really rough season for us. A couple things happened that I've shared on uh, Be The Church platform before, but one is that we lost my uncle tragically. Um, he was missing for um, a week, week and a half, and he um, died in a tragic boating accident. And so during that time, it was really hard to, um, it was just really hard, I should say, not just to do anything, it was really hard. And it's still really hard. We actually, um, it's just came up on a year from that. And so that was really tough. And of course our prayers and the time that he was missing was for him to be found, to be safe. And I had to keep coming back to this truth that Jesus is in control. When I say Jesus, I mean, I'm talking about the Trinity, right? So the Holy Spirit, God, and Jesus, and that um, Jesus is in control. And so at the end of the day, God's will will be done. And so sometimes we don't understand it, like in a tragic death, um, we don't understand why. And oftentimes I don't think we will in our lifetime. We don't understand what might be uh, going on. And it's not until we meet Jesus face to face uh, in heaven that all things hopefully will be revealed. And so that was one thing um, that really stuck with me this last season is that Jesus is in control. And I'll say that I, I'll speak for me as a fellow human, I like to be in control. And so when things don't go my way or when something again happens that doesn't seem fair, it doesn't seem just. I want to do whatever I can to make it right. And sometimes it really is just out of my control. And I will say that I think that feeling of being out of control is really where the sweet spot is when it comes to um, our relationship with Jesus is that we really need to work to uh, release any semblance of control because really in reality, we don't have control. And so I also wanna say that sometimes when we acknowledge that Jesus is in control, that can be angering. <laughs> like in the situation with my uncle, we were angry. You know, I can, I think I can speak for myself and my family. We were angry at the circumstances. It seems unfair, it seems unjust. And I just wanna encourage you that even though that's a truth that Jesus is in control, it's okay to be angry. <laughs> so God can take our anger. He is okay with it. He's big enough to handle that. And so I just wanna highlight that fact that it, there's something that happens because I think we as humans, I know me as a human, I do like to feel in control when that doesn't happen. In general, I sometimes get angry. And then even more so when there's a huge um, event in life that just seems unfair and just. And so I just want you to know that that's not easy. <laughs> so I don't wanna to come across that this idea that Jesus is in control is like an easy idea. It's really hard. And for me, it often comes with this push and this pull about releasing control. Another thing that I've uh, shared in this last year is that um, Ben and I have struggled with fertility and that we've undergone fertility treatments to try to have a baby. And I will say that this has become my mantra essentially this whole year that through all these, so I'll, let me count up, I've had three surgeries, <laughs> um, an additional procedure, so a surgery to remove um, polyps that they found in my body, um, two um, egg retrievals, as well as a procedure for an embryo transfer in addition to all the shots, all the medication, all the doctor visits, all the blood that has been, been drawn <laughs> from my body. I can tell myself like, okay, myself and Ben, we're doing what we can um, to fulfill this calling that we have to be parents. And that's all we can do. At the end of the day, God is in control. That has given me comfort. That has given me peace. While in some instances it, it angers me because <laughs> if I, of course, like if I were in control, I might do something differently. And so I struggle with anger in some instances. 
in this instance with the fertility piece it is really giving me a lot of comfort to say I'm doing what I can and Jesus is in control and so I want to point us back to again the Bible Lamentations 3 37 through 39 says who do you think spoke and it happened it's the master who gives such orders doesn't the high God speak everything good things and hard things alike into being and why would anyone gifted with life complain when punished for sin so we could <laughs> be punished for sin but we have the gift of life and again i want to say doesn't the high god speak everything good things and hard things alike there are some things that he has spoken um, whether it's things that have happened or whether he's convicting us that those can be hard and they can be good but we have a master a high god that we serve and sometimes it can really be comforting to know that he is in control and then finally <laughs> i want to leave you with um, a praise so praise god everybody applaud god all people his love has taken over our lives god's faithful ways are eternal hallelujah i love that part where it says his love has taken over our lives because the other thing that has kept me in a place of at least relationship with him. Now, I'm not saying that this last year I've had always had the best relationship with God because again, as I've said, my family and I, we struggle. His love does endure. Um, we know this to be true. I often think back to these hard times where I think of other things that I, I find hard, like a marriage <laughs> um, or just relationships. And I think, how do people who actually are not Christians, who don't know God, how do they do it? And I really don't know because at the end of the day, this, this idea in, in Psalm 117, one through two, where it says his love has taken over our lives. At the end of the day, that's what I have to lean into, that he loves us and that he has a plan. I only have a specific viewpoint, Peeper's viewpoint, <laughs> or maybe a couple other people's viewpoints that I can lean into, but I don't know God's viewpoint. He is bigger than anything we can imagine. I remember he created the universe and sometimes we forget this, <laughs> but his love has taken over our lives and God's faithful ways are eternal. And that is something that when I think about Jesus is in control, I love that. Like I actually, when I think about it, I want to release more control to God because I'm human, I'm flawed, I'm imperfect, but his faithful ways are eternal. So not only do we get to experience those faithful good ways in this life, we get to experience those in the next life. And so I hope that encourages you. <laughs> I think most encouragements come with both a truth and authenticity and vulnerability that can be hard while also hopefully being encouraging. And so that is where I leave you with today, that Jesus is in control. And so I'm not saying it's easy, but I know that when I acknowledge that he is in control, that I'm not in control, my life is his, that I get a sense of being one with him and my that surrender, there's power in that surrender. So I hope that helps you. There's power in that surrender. And maybe this mantra, like, what I've had this past year may help you too. So be blessed. Thank you for listening and let us know if there's anything we can help encourage you. We're here for you. So thank you and have a great day. Baby.